AFOLT, so the Anthropic Model Context Protocol, um, is a client-server architecture that makes it easy to connect generative AI models or LLMs with external tools and data sources. And so if you've ever built any LLM application, you sort of get the sense that um, the level of value that this um, application provides is really tied to the amount of tools that uh, the application can use. And so for example, if you were going to build the Ultimate Assistant, um, you'd want it perhaps to things like help you manage issues on GitHub, perhaps connect to Slack, read messages, sort of triage that, summarize that, or even create the files and put them on Drive. And the core idea is um, MCPs are sort of meant to provide some sort of gateway or standardized protocol or architecture to sort of connect with a set of uh, these tools and sort of integrate them with your AI application. An interesting thing is that while there are a lot of examples explaining how to click a bunch of bun a buttons on a tool like Cursor or Windsurf, uh, which are all like uh, software engineering or development IDs, there's just very little guidance on how you can use the same MCP protocol to build agents uh, for your own applications. And so in this video, that's exactly what we're going to cover. So we're going to cover three things. Um, we'll go over an overview of the MCP protocol, what it is and um, what are the key components. Um, we'll sort of go over some code showing how to integrate it with an origin agent. Um, it's actually really simple. You can do that in about two lines of code. And then at the end, um, stay till the end because I'll sort of talk about some of the current limitations I see with MCPs and why I personally will not be using them to sort of build applications at the moment. Okay, so what is an MCP server? And so the official documentation sort of defines it as an open protocol that standardizes how applications sort of provide context to LLMs. And so they sort of um, describe it as the USB-C port standard for AI applications. In terms of motivation, they sort of offer the promise of having um, a list or a collection of pre-built integrations that LLMs can sort of plug into. Um, they talk about the flexibility to switch between LLM providers and they're built to sort of codify best practices. And so I think as you mean, all of this works out well, these are some of the benefits that uh, one stands to get by sort of standardizing on a protocol like this. Um, so what does the core architecture look like? Um, I think the three important things are the ideas of a host, uh, clients and servers. And so a host is an application so for an example, might be the cloud desktop application or ideas like Cursor and Windsurf. And essentially this is where the user sort of, um, sort of has some sort of interaction with the overall uh, MCP uh, application or set of capabilities. Next, the client uh, maintains a one-on-one -on -one connection with the server and it runs inside of the host application. Um, and then this, finally, the server is where most of the core logic for tools, contexts, and all the other resources sort of sort of leaves. And essentially the communication between um, a host, um, essentially a client and the server um, is done across um, a transport layer protocol. And um, MCP supports two uh, types of uh, transport protocols. The first is the standard IO transport, which is a standard input and output for communication. Um, it's great for local processes um, or local uh, interactions. So things like file interactions, all of that um, works best with the SDIO uh, transport protocol. Um, the second protocol is server sent uh, events uh, over HTTP. And so um, this is uh, most likely suited for sort of remote uh, remotely hosted servers um, and I, I, I believe that like um, tools like service providers like Composio uh, sort of mostly provide MCP servers that run over the SSE uh, protocol. Um, so I think those are the most important things to sort of learn or understand as background uh, behind um, um, MCP and of course all transport protocols use JSON RPC 2.0 to sort of exchange messages. Um, as a developer, most of the time you probably never need to sort of um, interact at this level, the JSON RPC level, and most of the time you just need to make a decision around uh, using STDI or, um, or SSC transport protocols. Okay, so I have a notebook here and what we're going to walk through is some example code that shows how you can um, 
define an MCP server and connect to it, um, essentially make, it, make the tools on that MCP server available to your agents um, in Autogen. The first thing we want to do is install our dependencies. So here we're going to install the Autogen agent chat um, API. And next we're going to install the Autogen extension package with the MCP extra. So this just installs the MCP um, as the key underneath. Next, we're going to be integrating the MCP fetch server, which is an example reference server that's published by the Anthropic MCP team. And the way we're going to implement that or install that is using the UV tool. And so this uh, server is written in Python, and so we're going to use the UV tool. So the way we do that is we run UV tool install MCP server fetch that gets installed. Next thing we want to run is to ensure that that is available on that path. And so one thing to note is that uh, MCP servers essentially they get executed or run um, locally and essentially um, a client sort of connects to that server. So once we have run UV tool update shell, we ensure that um, the MCP fetch server or the tools installed here are available on that path. Next, we want to import our model client. We want to import some helper tools from the Autogen extension package that's going to help us sort of connect to our, our MCP server. We import an assistant agent and then we're probably ready to get started. The two important lines of code are here. We define the parameters for connecting to our MCP server. So here we're going to use the UVX command and then we define the arguments to the UVX command. And so once that is done, um, we run this helper tool from the Autogen uh, extensions package, which is MCP server tools, and we give it uh, the parameters of our MCP server. Underneath what this little application, uh, what this little helper tool does is that um, first it creates a client session. Um, it executes um, our server parameters. The client gets connected to the server. And then we run a list tools query. So to list all of the tools that are available on the server and automatically get, gets wrapped into an Autogen um, base tool class. And essentially it just provides all the JSON structure uh, for the tool schema. And now that we have that representation, we can then pass that to our assistant agent. And so here we define the agent, we define our model client. We give it uh, the tools, uh, passing those tools in the exact format that's expected and um, everything else just stays the same. And so the interesting thing to note here is it's um, any model client that supports tool calling or function calling would just work here. So let's, let's run this and sort of take a look and see what happens. And so here the user content, the user queries summarize the content at this location. So correctly, we get a function call that's been made. Um, with the URL argument. Um, next, we have um, the result of that function call. So the function gets executed. And then finally, we have um, the result from that being summarized um, as requested. And we get the final result from our agent. As an example, we can also define local model. So in this case, we're going to use the OpenAI chat completion client. We're going to connect to um, an LM Studio model I have running, and this will be a Quen 2.5 7 billion parameter model. And I have my um, and I have my um, LM Studio interface running here. And so I'm just going to run this. Let's take a look. And so we're getting uh, requests from uh, the application. And so correctly, we see that we have a function call. Um, Quen 2.5 is a really strong capable model. It's, um, it's able to execute, uh, run a function call. Next, the function call gets executed. And then finally, we need to uh, sort of summarize uh, the content of, of these. Uh, um, of these. And so we see that like um, Quen provides results in Markdown and summarizes the key points, all, all looking really, really good. So this is just an example of how you could um, take um, a Python MCP server, um, use the tools, uh, the MCP server tools abstraction in Autogen um, to sort of extract like a tool representation, and then you can pass it to your assistant agent and sort of run that uh, to work quite well. So after spending some time reviewing the documentation for MCPs and sort of looking through the reference implementation, um, my feeling is that um, 
MCPs, they're still very, very early. And so for that reason, it's just not something I'll be investing a lot of time in, um, at least for the moment. And here are like three high level reasons why. And so one of the reasons is that um, most of the examples are sort of geared towards integration into the cloud desktop application. Um, of course, the examples of using these things with Cursor and Windsurf, which are like um, software development IDs. But what's really, really missing is a focus on integration into any arbitrary Python LLM application. And so there are just very few examples of how you can take an MCP and integrate it directly into, let's say, um, an agent, even without a framework that can call tools. And so underneath these MCPs are mostly about tools. And so it's just, just very, very little example on how you can sort of um, test these things in any arbitrary uh, workflow. I think that's uh, that's a huge miss there. Um, the second reason is that the amount of setup is quite complex. And so to sort of create um, an installable, executable binary for your MCP, I sort of need to bundle this thing using a tool like UV or um, if it's a TypeScript, uh, MCP server, you need to figure out a way to ensure you can execute it using um, NPX. And there's just a lot of um, system configuration that needs, needs to be done to ensure this works correctly. Um, and so I feel again, there's opportunity to improve the developer experience there. And then finally, um, while the promise of a project like this is to have a store or a marketplace for reusable um, MCPs. My my feeling and my experience, and I've heard a lot of people talk about this, is that most of the third-party MCPs out there, um, they, uh, a big chunk of them are actually broken. They just don't work very, very well. Um, and all of this reminds me of the OpenAI GPT stock project from November 2023. And the idea was that the GPT store was to provide custom versions of ChatGPT that combine a specific instruction, um, knowledge, uh, tools, and skills. And it's super similar to what MCP is trying to do. And that didn't go very, very far. And I'm sort of really curious to see how MCP sort of differentiates itself and sort of uh, achieves a bit of success where, where, um, where the OpenAI GPT store did not. So we have covered a few things in this video. Um, first of all, we talked about uh, the MCP protocols. We talked about how we can integrate them in an autogen agent. We talked about some other limitations. And um, I, I really hope this project works out. Um, it's really, really interesting. Um, it's kind of interesting to see um, service providers like Composio sort of um, improve the process of sort of integrating with third-party applications and um, things like that also raise their own sort of challenges, right? And so in order to use something like Composio, you get an API key. You also need to sort of share your authentication credentials to sort of access third-party services. And um, again, you know, there's just all these, you know, um, layers of interaction that are related to an implementation like that. But I'm, I'm sort of curious to see how all of this shakes out. Um, Okay, that's all for now. Um, hope you found this video useful and I'll catch you in the next one.